Ahoy! And welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan, and today we're going to be working on the feet of the frames. Try and get those cleaned up and uh, measured to the bottom, and uh, possibly do a bit of cutting on the table saw. Anyway, thanks for uh, stopping in. And let's get to it. the two frame arms that we were just planning. Uh, clean off the bottom a bit. Let's 
So these are the uh, patterns for the frames. Here's the knee, the stern knee that we were sanding last uh, video. That's got that pretty much cleaned up. We'll just set this back here. So, um, it looked like it was just starting to rain as well, just as soon as we got out here, almost. So, uh, just go ahead and pull the uh, extension cord into the, the shop so that it doesn't start getting wet all of a sudden in the downpour that's expected. Very good. Yeah, and uh, we're at a point now where we're actually able to uh, take the clamps off the bottom as well. So we're done cleaving the bottom together. So it is what it is. And uh, these clamps can just get set aside till the next delivery gets ordered. I got another delivery coming into the shop, or out of the shop, as the case may be. I'll try and uh, try and save as much from each previous boat to reuse on the next boat. It's a good way to save a bit of money, reuse materials. And uh, there's also a certain amount of uh, memory associated with each item that you use in the build, which uh, may or may not help you avoid making uh, mistakes made previously again, you know, if you can jog your memory with with uh, some little bit of tooling or some little scrap of wood that you remember worked in one way or another. It may help you save a bit of time on your next build. You can imagine if you were doing this every day, how you'd uh, you know, really get good at it over time. Like I was saying, it's been almost four years since the last door I had built, so. Definitely can forget things once in a while. Yeah, breezing up out there too. Alright, so anyway, with the uh, with the bottom fairly clear of the uh, oh, yeah, here comes the wind. With the bottom fairly clear of the uh, random oh, that change of air feels good too. Nice cool breeze. Okay, so these here are the pieces of oak that we just planed up for the uh, feet. These are the frames. So this is, uh, I'm able to use two fairly sh you know, shorter scrap bits for this frame because we know for a fact that this frame is going to get cut in half anyway. It's uh, right in the section where the um, Alpha Dory's centerboard box will be going. So it's a good way to save a little wood and use 
use some leftover scrap to use two short pieces here. The other frames, the other three frames, uh, will end up being will end up being um, single solid pieces. So for that, we're going to need. At least 21 inches or so, which is the widest. It's actually slightly less than 21, but. And actually, let me restate that. It's got to be longer because the frames come out in this direction. And you actually need overlap because the half lap joints that we'll be cutting here. So you're going to need wider or longer than the maximum width of the boat. So. You know, 21, 22, 23, 24. We're probably going to need uh, all of this piece of wood to do the uh, half lapped joints. So this is probably maybe even uh, 25 or 26 inches here. Um, and the uh, stem and stern are another good place to use little short bits. Not quite as short as we're able to use on the um, around the centerboard box, but significantly shorter than the full frame in the middle. All right, so that's where that's where the uh, feet of the frames are going to be going. Now the arms of the frames, of course, are going to be building off of the feet much like this all right so next thing is to get out the uh, the frame arms and what I need to do is I need to get these frame arms cleaned up down to their final dimensions uh, at least the bottoms of the arms where they're going to be half lapped into the feet because I'm going to need those final dimensions to make an accurate measurement when we cut the half laps and uh, space those right to the edge of the bottom of the dory. So we need to uh, you know, have final dimensions to make those cuts to make the half laps and then to, uh, and then to fit the, uh, to get the exact width that we need as well. Now, so why don't we yank out the arms of the frames and head over to the bench and clean those up with the plane. Alright, so now I got the uh, got my hand plan out, my Fulton guaranteed tool. And I'll be using that and uh, so like I was saying, what we need to do next is trim down this surface and this surface where the foot of the frame is going to be joined to the arm of the frame. So then we'll be able to make final measurements and final cuts and actually get a uh, tight fit when we make that half lap joint. the blade down a bit. So I'm not cleaning up the entire entire frame right now just just straightening out and cleaning up the uh, 
to the bottom, say half of the frame. I'll go ahead and just grab one of my straight edges and you know, make sure that I'm straight towards the bottom of the frame. I need that those bottom, uh, say, three or four inches to be straight in order to get a good joint on the half flat. Now this, this side is uh, a little bit less um, less critical because this is going to get this is going to get planed down again. It's going to get tri trimmed to the angle of the bottom once the uh, once the frame is half lapped together and all. So that's that's close enough. And I just straightened out the, there was some wonky uh, wiggles from the bandsaw. But I just pretty much just, just straighten this out. I'm not doing anything crazy with it, just take the saw cuts out of it. So that's ready to go. And like I say, this, this edge is gonna get dressed once the frame is on the boat. So it's not as critical. But you wanna get it close to where it's gonna end up just so that you can measure it and install it on the boat close to where you want it. Otherwise, you don't want it too short and you don't want it out too far either, which isn't quite as bad as too short. If it's out too far, you're gonna to have to be removing a fair amount of material off the frame. And you know, of course you don't wanna remove so much that you thin it down, but even so, every time you have to remove material, it's just uh, extra work and added time. So try and get it as close as you can the first time and it'll be that much quicker the rest of the time. So I've got seven more of these to do and then we'll be ready to uh, go ahead and uh, start fitting the half lap joints. Yeah, so of course the uh, angle of those half flaps is also going to be pretty important because the angle those frames set in on, the half flap set, set in on, really determines the angle of the sides of the dory. If, uh, <coughs> if one side is at a little bit different angle than the other, you know, you'll end up with a, with a wider boat on one side than on the other side, because the frame will lay out further, and it'll push those planks out further. So you want to try and get them as close to the same as you can. Now if they're slightly off from the plan, uh, you know, it's not the worst thing as long as both of them are off by the same amount. And that's just the sort of a uh, little bit of individuality that you know, goes into each handmade boat, which is probably to some degree how these boats evolved over time. You know, a builder would 
put in a little bit more or a little bit less flare in a frame, you know, either intentionally or possibly accidentally, just tweak each each boat a little bit to try and get a better boat, try and get different characteristics out of it. Of course, we're uh, we're working on something that was uh, we're working on something that was mainly a racing dory. So that means that the primary characteristic they're going for when they're working out the design is a good turn of speed. And if, uh, you know, if someone had another door that was faster than yours, Even if it was a, even if it was a fishing dory, of course they'd be the envy of the fleet. They could get back to town a little bit sooner and sell their fresh, sell their fish a little bit fresher. And they also had bragging rights. Someone was saying that the definition of a definition of a sailboat race is two sailboats with their sails up within sight of each other headed in the same direction. So once you meet those criteria you've de facto got a race on your hands. It's a similar sort of situation up that the small reach of data each year. Yeah. If you've got a group of small traditional wooden boats, all handmade and really put together with love and care, you know, made out of beautiful material, you know. Wood is all around the best material to make any boat out of. So it's a uh, you know, group of like-minded boats all traveling in the same direction <laughs> with inside of each other. So you end up uh, end up comparing your speeds with all the other guys out on the water. And it really uh, you know, kind of makes for that much more interesting and that much more enjoyable sailing to sail with others. And if you do something, you tweak your boat a little bit, then uh, you've got some, you've got people to compare it with, you know. If you uh, do something to your boat when you're out there alone, I mean, you can typically, typically get an idea whether you're sailing closer to the wind or not. You can get an idea whether you speed up a little bit or slow down. But it's just that much more informative if you're with a group of other guys who can you know, check your trim or see how the sails are set. Guys and gals, because of course we do have a number of women captains who uh, participate each year as well. We've really uh, enjoyed going up there to Brooklyn, Maine over the years. Of course, with a boat like an Alpha Dory at 21 feet, it's one of the biggest, fastest boats up there. And it's kind of interesting because the faster the boat you've got, kind of le the less interested you are in actually racing with other people. Because, you know, it's like you got a big 21 foot racing dory, 
it's not exactly sporting to uh, to race with some little uh, you know 15 foot pea pod or whatever that was designed for pulling lobster traps along the rock bound coast of Maine or whatever. Then again, there's always a few new boats in the mix, you know, some of these plywood boats and whatnot, you don't, you don't mind so much racing against them because you've got a hundred year old racing design and they've got a, you know, 10 or 12 year old racing design, so you're already at a hundred year dis disadvantage. So you don't, you don't feel so bad about showing them your transom every now and again. And this boat will do that, even with a modern design. Especially in uh, light to moderate winds. The uh, more modern boats, say post... Uh, Oh gosh, maybe like say 1920 or 1930. Definitely by the 1940s and 50s. The, uh, the design of racing sailboats was influenced by the ability of boats to plane and the, uh, a lot of the design advancements brought about by motorboats. So the later sailboats have a much wider, flatter transom that allows the, allows the boat to plane off, you know, not terribly cleanly on most of those older, older designs, but it gives the boat more power than, a, than an Alphador, which is essentially a double under. But uh, the big bonus with the Alpha door is you, know, you can put a lot of weight in it and that'll set it down in the water. But that transom's not going to drag. Whereas if you're in a more modern boat with a wide stern, you put five people in it, that big flat transom gets down in the water and all of a sudden you're dragging half the bay behind you and you're not getting up on plane. Those planing boats rely on lightweight to, for their performance. And uh, yeah, there's not really any, any of those boats that, uh, that qualify for the small reach anyway because the traditional small craft is um, any boat designed before the advent of the marine, marine engine. And uh, now there are a number of those plywood designs uh, that get into the into the small reach because uh, it's also sponsored by Wooden Boat or was originally. So a lot of the little plywood light boats, those are planing hulls, and so they'll really take off in a strong wind, just leave you in the dust, or at least. Most boats, the Alpha, most uh, traditional boats, the Alpha Dory does pretty good keeping up with them, but but even so, it, it starts to have trouble much over 20 miles an hour wind, 25 keeping up off the wind. You still got a chance going upwind because it's like I say, it's a super efficient hull form, it goes upwind really well. So it's always nice having that big beautiful run on the Alpha. You can load it up with a bunch of gear for the day. Head for the beach. Or even head for a, uh, for an island campsite. 
of all your gear. Not even notice it's in the boat. Doesn't slow the boat down at all. And it just gets more and more stable the more weight you put in it. So it's really an excellent, uh, an excellent cruising boat. It's an open boat, but it uh, throws quite a bit of, throws, knocks down the spray really well. So it's not a wet boat to sail, even upwind, you know, unless you're really trying to push it, really bashing into it. But you can kind of dial it back a little bit and just get a really dry ride. Check how these are coming out. And of course it's got the uh, simplicity, simplicity to build of any dory. Simple and strong construction method. And these days with the uh, latest and greatest goops and goos and paints and potions and whatnot, you don't even need to uh, don't need, even need to make the hull water tight. You know, you can put a layer of uh, glass on it and that'll do the water tighting for you. You know, as long as you get the as long as you get the um, the parts and pieces to fit reasonably. Close. I'm trying to get these fits to be uh, to be watertight, even though we are gonna fiberglass the bottom. But you know, if it's your first door you're building, you, know, you don't really need to sweat it that much. Get it to float either way. 